What is up everybody and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today, I know I promised some saltwater stuff, but I think we're going to move that to Thursday. And then tomorrow's video will definitely have some saltwater stuff with the guide. But we're just going to hit some more ponds. I kind of got on Google Earth and asked you guys where your favorite spots were. And we found this one first, so uh, let's try it out. There are gators though. Don't feed them. It's going to be tempting, but I won't. Alright, we're going to start out with a trap. Actually, you know what? I'm going to walk the bank for just a minute. See if I can see any beds. Cause if I can, that'd be prime. Then I know how to catch them. But if my other pond was post spawn, this one is probably, if there's bass in it, it's probably post spawn as well. So we shall see. All right, so my approach to pond fishing kind of starts off with, you know, unless I know where the fish are, I'm most likely gonna start with a search bait. So like a chatter bait, a lipless crankbait, rattle trap. I mean, I never use a spinner bait, but you can. And that serves several purposes. One is to basically find out what the bottom is like. So I'm dragging this trap right along the bottom to kind of feel if there's any grass, if it's just sands, any rocks. That way I can know what other baits to help, uh, you know, to throw to help figure out a pattern. And what I figured out so far is that it's super deep, from 15 to 20 feet out there in the middle, and then it comes up real quick. See, my bait knocks for about 10 seconds right before I pull it out of the water, which means it's coming up a hill and then out of the water. So. I have not pulled up any grass yet, which means there's probably no grass in this pond, which for a pond this size is uh, sort of concerning. So I'm gonna flip around to Texas Reed Craw here in a second on those reeds and see if I can hook up with the fish. So I've got no bites in the shallow cover and pretty much the whole lake is the same. So what I'm gonna do, just kind of eliminate this pond or not, I'm gonna cast my craw way out there and kind of make one full cast in working up the transition bank. And uh, if I don't get a bite, moving on. All right, new pond. You guys all told me about this one. I had several people tell me about it, so we're gonna give it a try. Honestly, it looks like complete trash. Like the water clarity is horrible. So we're gonna see if you guys were right if it's actually bass in here. So I hate to ditch on a pond or a lake so quick, but there's rowers here, the water's dirty, and I just don't honestly see how a fish would live here. I'm sure you guys are gonna comment below and tell me what I'm missing about this place, but it just looks horrible. Like, it does not look like quality bass fishing uh, pond, so we're going to move on to something else. Oh my gracious. There is hydrilla aplenty in this pond. And it looks like there was a bed right there. Okay, so this pond looks fire. I just don't know how I'm going to fish it because there's like all these weird lily pads in the way. But that was a bed right there. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's a fish on a bed right there. There is a fish on a bed right there. No way. I haven't seen this in, in, in like eight months. Oh, no way. Stinking three pounder on a bed right there. Where'd he go? Gosh dang it. This is crazy to me how these fish will not eat a trap. I, I, I don't understand this weirdest thing. I know there's bass in here because I just saw a three pounder on a bed. I I don't understand it. Okay so so I came back to this bed over here and there's the three pounder I see him there and I'm not joking you a 20 pound fish of some kind was sitting on the bed with it. It couldn't have been a bass. It almost looked like a striper but I know in Florida you guys have snook and stuff so it might have been a giant snook. I honestly have no clue. Holy moly, the thing was big. You know what, we're gonna go check out a different area of the pond and we're gonna come back to that sucker because whatever that was, I sure hope it was a bass. All right guys, I'm taking off the frog because it's not really gotten us any bites surprisingly. So I'm gonna put on a punch rig just to punch some of this shoreline grass. If I get a bite, I'm coming back here with the kayak. Got one. Papa, Papa. <laughs> finally was able to hook up with my first bass out of this place. Classic Florida pond fish. Uh-huh. On the punch rig. See, I knew they'd be under this stuff. Yep, we found the bait, says my grandpa. My first one. Not as big as the one yesterday, but we'll, we'll take him. Yes. Oh, there he goes. Yep. That thing is black. Oh my goodness, this thing is black. Ooh, let me see that. Let me take a picture of it. Look at how dark that thing is, guys. 
You that, doing the no. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, that's a Florida bass if I've ever seen one. Wow. Let me get my, uh, Holy moly, that thing is very, very dark. Does he got a name? Is it a black bass? It's a black bass. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> All right, another semi semi black one. He couldn't get any of his energy out. He's not as black. He's just a regular regular color. So it seems like guys, these shallow fish are the small ones. So I'm guessing if I can get out there, that's where the big ones are going to be. But hey, I'm catching fish. I'm not complaining. Adios. So we were taking a break. My grandpa and I going to Culver's. He's always saying saying funny stuff. Gonna get some lunch and hopefully get back to that bed fish. Whoever told you guys that driving a van is lame is lying. Cause look at this. This is how you shift gears. Look at that. Reverse. Got a pretty cool car, Papa. Huh? Look at that. Drive, reverse, park. Wow. You got a pretty cool what? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is a bass. That's a six, that's, a, that's an eight pounder. I'm not joking. That's an eight pounder. Ooh, some cheese right here. There's some cheese. Where are those dirt roads for miles? Hay in the fields and fishing hydrilla. Well, everybody, sadly, fish is gone. The male and female are gone for some reason. I don't know if it was the cloud cover that moved in that made them insecure about where they were or if it was my bait sitting in there, but they were very skittish to start with. So. I think in tomorrow's video I may come back and try to see if they're if they're doing their thing again, but man, that was a big one. So here's the second half of the video. One thing I love about being on YouTube is that I get to meet cool guys like Tony. He messaged me on Instagram and said, hey, I'm in the area, I want to go fishing, and I said I have two hours free tonight, so let's do it. Um, tell them a little about your about yourself. Uh, I've been fishing my whole life. I've been in the Army 17 years now, still in uh, active duty. Um, love to fish, love to pond hop. I'm going to start doing some kayak uh, fishing soon. That's it. That's it. So he took me to his fire pond. Hopefully we'll catch some on beds. If not, he says there's big fish in here. What's your PB? Here? Five and a half. Five and a half. Let's break that today. Let's go. <laughs> How many times do you throw a whopper plopper here? I don't know, 500. 500 times. And on my fourth cast. All right, guys. First fish here. He didn't explode on it a whole lot. He just kind of kind of swiped at it. Sweet. I love it. See ya. Get out of there. Got my plopper stuck in a bush. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Got him, got him. I saw him waking up on it too. I don't know how big he is, to be honest. I just got him, yeah, I got him side hooked, I think. Oh, he's a dink. What? <laughs> he acted like he was so much bigger, but I saw a wake on it and I said, here he comes. And there he was. Man, how would, he fought so hard for how big he is. It's crazy. This cast, he wasn't going to. I got one. Hey, Tony. <laughs> well, guys, you're getting a whopper plopper demonstration here. As you can see, we're just fishing. We're fishing all the uh, the reed lines here, as there's nothing much else in the pond, and the little dinks are out to play. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I'm talking quiet right now because my grandparents are sleeping in the other room while I edit, but. Uh... I had a blast fishing with my grandpa today, although he didn't actually do any fishing, he just did some, you know, sending videos to his buddies. But it was cool to catch some bass, even if there were dinks, you know, punching throw and throwing the barber plopper. And what I thought was cool was the bass were so dark. Now that that black that bass that I thought was the blackest I'd ever seen, I talked to some people around the area and they said that that's basically how a lot of Florida bass are because they spend so much time in the brackish water that's just filled with grass and lily pads that they don't know anything different. 
Um, so it, it's pretty crazy to see these fish that are so much different than, you know, the Texas fish that I fish for. But I'm having a blast here in Florida. we got a few more days and some more great videos coming. We'll see you next time.